Okay, well, thank you very much everyone for coming along. Uh, another little difference tonight. We've got a uh, pretty amazing little uh, uh, E30 rally car here. Dominic Corcoran has uh, kindly come along tonight to tell us um, his history and what he's been doing with this little car. He's been quite successful recently. And uh, you know, to have a, a club member doing this sort of uh, good stuff uh, is, uh, is only fantastic. So, first of all, congratulations. Well, thank and, you. Uh, no, not for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, um, thank, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Dominic. I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you why congratulations in a little bit. Um, first of all, is there anyone here who does not actually know what a rally is or how they work? How rally operate? I mean, circuit racing is easy when I understand <laughs> everyone not easy to do, but even like, it's easy, it lines up, goes spin on a track. But is there anyone who does not quite understand how a rally actually works. I don't know if people are actually brave enough to do rallies. Oh, well, <laughs> brave or silly, one of the, one of the two. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, <laughs> rallying, rallying is, probably, um, is probably the oldest form of motorsport. And essentially, it started by going from point A to point B. Right? And what it's evolved into is a set of stages. Uh, and there's two slot stages. You have a competitive stage and you have a transport stage, which these days is now called liaison, because we being most of the current and French terminology. So what happens is everyone lines up, everyone lines up from what would be a seated position. Now, the, unlike qualifying for uh, road racing and the circuit racing, they have a seating list. And that operates much the same way as tennis would. So you have number one seated for a tournament, two, three, four, five, backwards and forwards. So the same thing happens in a, in a rally. So the more rallies you do, the faster you get, the higher up you are on the seating list higher up in starting position is on the road. So you start from a, from a particular point and everyone leaves at two minute intervals. So, John, no one gets caught up in some of the accident, which is really, no, really good. No, no. So that's a, that's a <laughs> real big positive. So we go at two minute intervals and then you transport out on the on a public road, which you'll notice the car is registered, is a special registration. And then you come to a competitive stage and then you book in. And, um, and then you're given an allocated time to start. You start, then you go competitive, so you go as fast as you possibly can down this particular road with all sets of instructions and things. And I've, I've got some in car to show you how it operates from the inside of the car. And then, then you do it again through a travel stage, the next competitive, then transport to the next competitive until you get to the end of the, end of the event. And it's the lowest accumulated time over all the competitive road sections, which is who just declared the winner. So uh, you can. A rally will probably last could last probably about seven or eight hours. It might be about 120 kilometres competitive in that in that time, and um, it's quite exciting, really. So uh, I've uh, I've been doing it for quite a while. So uh, when I was asked to, I was coming along. I I started this project a little while ago, and that's I didn't know what to do with the with the talk. So I decided I'll well, take you through the car, live up what rallying is, a little bit of what I do, and um, go from there. So. Question, I suppose you're asking is how does that <laughs> become that? It's hard to do it either, and how does that get to be that? Time and money. Time and money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's how it happens. Okay, that, yeah, that's how it happens. So this week in blank because I thought I'd leave that to the bit of what I've been doing. I've been in rally for 33 years, I think it is, about now. So we have pretty much all my adult life. And I have um, always wanted to be a driver, as everyone usually starts, but I just always wanted to be a driver. And I always loved rallying. The thing was I couldn't afford a car, and every time I was going to buy a car, for some reason I'd miss out, some bought it underneath or whatever. So I became a co-driver. So I worked my way up through the ranks of being in a car club, and then doing club rallies, then I advanced to doing state championship events, then the Australian Rally Championship, and I'm very lucky to, I did it for about 10 or 11 years during the period, which is probably the best Australian champions ever seen, when we had Subaru with Possum Warnie's team, Mitsubishi uh, was competing, well they were, they were obviously the only, we had Ford, we had Toyota, and I was competing in the outright class back in those days. I was in a private entry, but a, a satellite rally art team, run by a guy by the name of George Shepard, who some of you who've been around BMW's motorsport might, might know, because George was the devil. <laughs> he was, um, at the time, he was, he was the team manager of Volvo S40 Racing during the days of the Super Touring, 
when BMW was uh, running the Super Tourist. So in the workshop we had Volvo S40 Racing on one side and we had the, um, the Evo on the other side. So that's me in Adelaide. So uh, yeah, that was a, that was a Cooper's Pale Ale Rally. So that's, yeah, it was a pretty good car actually, wasn't it? That, that six, here's a bit of an idea. It was a lovely car. Really, really, really nice car, that's nice and clean. That's, that's, I think that's what that's me there. Now you can see that's, and that's Steve Shepherd. That's, uh, that's George's son, who was, um, who was uh, we're doing Australian Rally Championship events in those days. We won a state championship together. And, but the car looks beautiful there, but it's not always looking, <coughs> looking great. The, um, this was an unfortunate thing we had in Melbourne, Rally of Melbourne one time, and the road tightened up on us. Uh, even though we had notes, it was one of the first times we actually, they actually restricted wrecking, and we just missed one little piece of nipping in the corner at the end. And it was a fourth gear corner max, and it was like 100% final position, and we hit the, the bank. The day we showed about 148 kilometres an hour into the bank, and we rolled multiple times. Um, let's go back a little bit. That is exactly the same car four weeks later. So in four weeks, we got that car, truck, on our truck from Melbourne, back up to our base in Brisbane, rebuilt, re-stickered, back in Scoop area, three week, in three week turnaround, from Melbourne to Brisbane to Adelaide. We did like that. So, as anyone in Motorsport knows, money solves everything. <laughs> I thought it must have flew back in the air. <laughs> no, not quite. Not quite. Okay, so one reason why I show you this picture here is I'll go through bits of the car. So a roll cage is very important. And um, you can see I've got, I've got a few photos here of doing the build process, so it's a bit more stripped away. That cage was built by Casey of Running Sports, who is an FIA standard. Is that this car here? That's, that's this car here, actually. Sure. Okay. That's this car here. That pink stuff, by the way, is, um, is, uh, fire, is fire proof foam, expanded foam. Because they have to, because you have to seal, if you move the boot from underneath the forwards it is, into the, in the boot area, then you have to be able to seal it, seal it away. So that, that's what that is. And you don't need to fill tanks under rally cars, if you can possibly avoid it, because yep. they get full holes for starters. So yeah, that says a little bit of the inside bit that's being built, so you can see that the bar's going across. The, um, it's not quite a science bar, it's not, and it's not, as you'll notice, it doesn't follow down the line of the eight pillar either. And the reason for that is it's actually stronger in that particular angle. It's a state-based cage, I think, in the Saints bar. And what it does is it crosses over at the point of where the A-pillar is. So when you're sitting in the car and you're looking towards the A-pillar, all you see is like that thick. When you, when you put a, a, a roll cage that goes down inside the A-pillar, you've got something that's that thick, and your eye starts here, goes to there. By the time you're seeing, trying to see a tree pick an apex, you've actually got a blind spot about this wide. So that's why, that's why I've done that. Um, pedal box, it's a Tilton Motorsport pedal box. And I'll show you that picture there because you can see the footing. So you can see how it's all been sculpted, it's all been sculpted in into the, um, into the actual vehicle itself. So it's, a very, so it's a very heavy duty piece of, um, piece of uh, fabrication. And if you see a little hole there, on the bottom side of the, the sill, that's where the sill stands go. So when we go to work on it during the service, we jack it up and we put the sill stands in take the wheels off and walk away, and it's a nice, steady, solid work surface. So you don't need to have, it's in, that's in place of having uh, jack stands on the car. So uh, again, again, safety is pretty paramount. That's why we do that. The exhaust system, um, that was made by Exhaust Innovations. It's a special set of pipes made by Brian to be, to be tune length, man or bed. And um, I thought to myself, well, I can't put the standard uh, fuel, uh, sorry, uh, exhaust manifold in the car because this E46 which it came from manifold doesn't fit that body so I thought if I'm going to get an exhaust built I might as well get a good one built so there um, that's kind of the boot I've got it up so most of you've seen it, seen it already that's a fully battled tank probably hold about 85 litres I don't know like it's going to see I'll stop counting at 60 um, it depending on depending on the event $20 pardon that's $120 today yeah probably yeah maybe more but anyway, but it's a fully baffled tank, sitting on those got a position there, so sitting over the rear axle. Um, Facet fuel pumps, so those are high pressure pumps, which uh, go through a two and a half litre swell pipe. 
to those Bosch Opal or Motorsport pumps. So make sure they've got good pressure. So it's one of those a backup, is it? Yeah, it's essentially it's two. Yeah, well, actually, that's isolated off there. Yeah. I just got to ask that question. Yeah, well, the red, well, I have actually been in rally cars because rally cars take a pound and they can bang, they, and fuel pumps are not normally designed to take that much of pounding. I have actually been in cars before where, as a co driver, the car stops because the fuel pump has died and the driver says, Oh, I've got to spare the truck. I thought, What the bloody good is that? You know, so the, the extra cost, if you've, got, if you've got the parts, the extra cost is just the fuel line, the extra fuel line to, to plug it in. So it's the cost of actually doing that is the cost of one entry fee. So it's, from a point of view of saving you know, money, but if, if you go go for a fuel, it's, it's a good idea to have a backup. So I've got pump one, pump two. So do you know if one's failed? Oh yeah, you have to use car stops. Yeah, car stops, no more fuel. Doesn't it automatically swap over? No, I'm just on a toggle switch. Ah, on a toggle switch. Uh -huh. switch. The uh, car was rewired, it was completely stripped. It was a, it was a bare shell removal, by the way. So everything came out of the car. And uh, that was, that's the, uh, the inside of the glove compartment. So everything is being wired in, everything is individually infused. There's a bus bar up underneath the dashboard you can't see. So, so essentially, so everything's been built with serviceability and reliability in mind and safety. Those are the, those are the key features when you build a rally car. Which, so we do. So the specs. So the engine itself, it's, it's a two liter, two point eight liter, out of an E forty six. Got a donut, found a donut car it had two hundred and sixteen thousand kilometres on it. And the engine hasn't been cracked open yet, and it was still putting out 155 pounds on the compression test. So, that was heavy. <laughs> just run in. Hey, just just, run, just in. run in. It led back. So the 2.8 litre engine is sort of like an economy engine. In the in in the when they the M52 was a bit of an orphan. It was, a, it was an odd one when they were making these engines. So it had the same kilowatts, if you like, off the showroom floor as a 2.5. It had more torque. Theory being more, more economical. But as a result, it's got had smaller inlet one and so on. Things seem to breathe, so I've got the three liter manifold. So it's got big bigger bigger inlet one so that's the area. So it's painted on filter, custom tuning exhaust, which you've seen, um, standard computer with, with mat, mats on the mats on the remapping for the um, for the extra air and the extra fuel that's gone into it. And, and an inlet cam to match the, the extra air that's coming. So everything's nicely coordinated. So I've used pretty much, with the exception of the exhaust, because they bend up the part that wouldn't fit, everything is standard BMW components. And I wanted to do that because essentially the more standard you can keep these things, when they're running hot and you store it, whatever else like that, the first thing you want to do is start. And they're hot, when they're really hot and running and everyone's all hot and bothered, you don't want to think cranking, 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 because you've got a temperamental motor. So, and uh, I've proven it works. So the, re the result is 195 real horsepower, 6,000 RPM. The standard car's about 145, 150 at 5,500. So we've increased it by what, 25% and we've moved the, the power, the peak power by the route now as well. And it's got a little bit more torque and it's a big fat, flat curve. It's lovely, it's almost like too much. The max bar per year is 7,000. Uh, I don't know what the standard one was, but We've, we've delivered it to 7,000, because on the dyno once you pay 7,000, how's us dropping the cliff, so there's not much point in keeping it. And the max and speed, what I happen to know is 185 on the limiter, because I've done it. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit, bit of a, we're going a long, long gravel road, and I thought, what's, what's going on here? And then this engine's got that on the limiter, that bang, 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 noise that, oh, I even fifth. <laughs> so I did go home and put the cut that together, it's 185 on the dirt. I said, I probably don't want to go too much faster on the dirt road anyway. So, yeah. Especially two-wheel drive. <laughs> gearbox, just a standard gearbox um, out, of a, out of the E46. I've got the package, the engine, the, the tail shaft, the gearbox, all standard. It's got a, so it's a one one fifth. It's got a four button clutch and a light M27 mass flywheel. That's essentially so that it just spins up faster. Um, the diff is a medium case, E36 with an F3 LSD and a 4.45 to 1 crown on pinion, which is important in a rally car, which is why they does one. So that's why they does 185 at 7,000. Um, yeah, rally cars are not made for top speed, they're made for acceleration. And which we've also got to, got to overcome is those are pretty rally cars, those, those cars I run on, 
Um, there's a lot of resistance in, the, in that rubber, and there's a lot of resistance on a gravel road. So you need to be able to, to get your acceleration, you really do need to have a very short gear in order to uh, overcome those, um, those obstacles. And lastly, the suspension, MCA Gold, it's Murray Coop. Uh, we're very, very fortunate that we have one of the very best brains in shock absorber technology in the world sitting on our doorstep in, uh, in Landsborough. And these are the gold competition shops with uh, custom key springs. So the, the springs are an off the shelf one, 150 pound in the front. The rears, uh, because you've got a motion ratio, uh, it's, it's they're high in pounds, but they're a linear spring, which is a 350 pounds linear spring. The standard spring King's Tiling is a progressive spring, which is 450 to 550 pounds. So it's actually significantly softer than a rear, than a standard, standard uh, shock. So it's a standard rear spring. Right? The wheels, of course, came from Italy. I had to get them specially made because I needed them to fit over the brakes, which are Mazda brakes. And a 4100 with a plus six offset. So if anyone knows anything about offsets, the standard E30 offset is 35. I actually looked it up, Dennis, this afternoon, and mine are 35. The steel ones, 35. The steel is 35, so I've actually increased the off, actually increased the track by 58 millimetres. So it's actually a bit wider across the, across the track. And that's made to give it a stability, and as I said, clear the brakes. You often get a lot of rocks and sticks and things caught between the brakes, and the clearances aren't too good, they get jammed, and that's not really good for your calibers. Um, the tyres are Pirelli, special competition tyres. I run K6, which is soft on the front, and medium and mediums on the rear. I have got the K6 on the front because I'm driving the road, I don't want to destroy it. And the weight of the car is 1170 kilos, which is a little bit lighter than the 325 version of these, but there's a lot of weight in, in things like spare wheels and bigger fuel tanks and fuel lines and sump guards, seats, belts. Roll cage. Roll, well, roll, roll cage. Well, roll cage is a roll cage. But, I mean, you could easily pull 150 kilos of rally gear out of that feet. And, and um, you know, the doors are obviously standard. Um, things like the big door bars that are standing inside the car, we leave those in there for rallying because you're hitting something sideways, like a tree. Um, the last thing you want is a tissue paper between you and the tree and one bar. So, I don't know, John's nodding his head in, a, <laughs> in knowledge. It's a different, it's just a different kind of fish. So, so that's, that's made the car in a nutshell. So, this now, what's it sound like? How's it look and sound? So this, this, is a compilation of, this is a compilation that we took of bits and pieces throughout the year. told it's the best selling car in the forest. Every time I go out, every, every time I go out, I'm told it is the best selling car. Guarantee that. Best selling the last car. two meetings it sounded so much better than everything else. Oh, yeah. So, is that the rally in Queensland, is it? Oh, they, these have been rallies I've done throughout the year. 
Because you didn't hear me, I said, hey, where was that long down hill section? Oh, that was in Benarkin. Benarkin? Benarkin, which is just this on of the Nango. Okay. Up the, up the, up the range, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's not a town there, there's a school That's off to the right, then you go through Blackbutt, well, Benarkin is just this sort of about three or four okay. k's. Yeah, but Janitor was where you were coming into the spectators, but there wasn't. No, no, that was different. No, there's a spectator point where um, I was doing 185, I was, I was on the limit for about, I don't know, about 400 metres. And the thing is, when, you're doing your, when I was doing the notes, you can see it quite easily when you're doing like 40, 50 kilometres now. When the approach was 80, 185, you couldn't quite see the road, you didn't realise the road did the way here. And I couldn't quite see it, so I accidentally went backwards. And that's what I guess is what I'm into. So that's what it's like on the outside. So in, on the inside, so the events, the stage, the video I want to show you is a full stage from the last round of the Queensland Championship. It was a blind rally, which means there's only a route chart out by the hazards, no pace mate. So you don't, there's no reconnaissance out of the corner, so you've got to drive to what you can see. Now this particular stage, uh, this particular rally had three national champions in it. It had a range, it had a, I don't know, about three or four turbos, five turbos still left it by this point. And it had a whole bunch of Group 4 rally cars. Now Group 4, back in the 70s and 80s, were the bee's knees, and there's like one Group 4 car in the country that owns the guy less than a quarter of a million dollars, and most of the guys are serious peddlers. On this stage, I got 13th outright out of a field of 40. So, that's what this stage, this is what it looks like. Don't forget launch gear second. Oh. There is one point I would like to tell you. Um, towards the end of the straight, well, well it's actually not straight, it's like this. Um, there's a causeway, you can't quite see the speedo. Just so you know, the last causeway we put the crossroads, that was 165 kilometres an hour. Just, just so you understand the speed from off. Because it doesn't actually look it, but yeah, it was. And you might notice the road disappear off to the left. That's second gear, don't forget. That's that turn up there. Yep, we'll need to do that one. Okay, 200 is keep left on main road. Oh, yeah, Rick. Hold up. Yeah. 300 is straight on. Yeah, and 400 is straight on. Oh yeah, it is terribly fast. 1.3 k's is straight on over crossroads. I hope you can remember it as well as you think you can. So one kilometre is straight on at crossroads. One more k to go? Yes. Oh, I know, we're crossing Western Creek. Yes. So 500 is straight on over crossroads. 300 is straight on at the crossroads. Have you got it? Yep. You got it? Straight yep. on. 300 is turn right uphill with ruts. Got not. That's coming up in 100. Is a turn right uphill. Ooh. Turn right uphill here. Yeah. 500 is turn right. It's double caution for gutter. Oh. Maybe. Here we go. 300, a double caution, turn right, caution, gutter. Well, oh, we're dead again. Oh, come on, baby, you can do it. 100 is a double caution board for turn right, caution, gutter. Perfect. 500, crest, and then road goes left down. Is crest, road goes left, down. 
come out, just get it. Yeah. Oh, the turn left at the end. It's crest road goes left, and that's coming up at 100. Again, crest road goes left, down. How long is it? 400, the triple caution. Hump oh, road goes right. right, turn very hard left. I know it. It's a sheep. Coming up 200. Coming at 100, there's triple caution. Hump road goes right to turn very hard left. Yep, to do. Very hard left. That would be in a handbrake, mate. 300, keep right, uphill. Don't yep. tip it, it will roll the tire. Yep. 200 is keep right uphill. Keep right uphill. 300 is. Oh. 300, grid road goes right over crest. Grid. That's coming up at 200. Yes, grid, then road goes right over crest. Grid here, road goes right over oh, no. crest. 400, turn very hard left off main road. Yeah, to the other hill here. Yep. That's coming up at 200. In 100, turn very hard left. Hard very hard to see. Yep. Into road goes hard right. Who is it? Down there. Oh, here it is. Yep. Into road goes hard right, don't cut. Yep, road goes hard right here, don't cut. No, no. 700, the road goes right down the hill. Let's take it back to the old creek, it's road too. Keeps one point if you use it. Ooh. Okay, 500, this road goes right down hill. That'll be 300 for road goes right. In 100, the road goes right downhill with ruts. Oh, Jesus, Dom. I think you got it, whatever it was. The road goes right downhill with ruts. And 200 to keep right, caution Rocky Creek crossing. Yeah, no, road goes right into the creek crossing. Keep right, Rocky Creek crossing. Just here, keep right. Rocky Creek crossing. 200, caution hump. 90, caution hump again. Yeah, there's a lot of humps up here, and it's on the yep. exit of the corner. Yep, and that's in 100. The caution hump and caution hump again. There's one. You can see the next one. And 200, turn right at T. Turning right here. 200, bear right off main road. 200, bear right. Yes. That's in 100, bear right off main road. Straight ahead here. Bear right. Oh, yes. right, okay, I'm with you. Straight on, yeah. 200, turn very hard left. Yeah, I know. Down there, turn very hard left. Use the wand, and you got it. Snap. And <laughs> 150 Did stumps. I get it? Yes, you did. Stumps <laughs> on inside. Caution, stumps. Yeah, yeah. I know. 300, keep right onto main road. That's at 200, we'll keep right onto main road. There we are. 500, turn right off main road, hard to see. Up there, turn right off main road. Where is it? Turn right before the one to... Right. By the arrow? Yep, just here. At 200, turn left, hard to see, then turn right on the main road. I remember this bit. It was really boggy at I rock. And then turn right. And then fly and finish. And go, go, go. And we're done. Well, that was an interesting way to finish a scrappy stage. Yeah, that's another way of putting it. Is the camera off yet? Not yet. <laughs>
You might know some of these. So Piers and Simon have a lot to do with uh, put, helping put this in together. Dennis, sure I can do that. Because Dennis did you get that? <laughs> 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 this guy, some of, might, some of you might know him. Greg. That's Greg Wood. Yeah. And this dude. So that you know, now that you've finally finished the car, yeah. I don't think it was related that Greg actually had a heart attack. I know, yeah, Greg had a heart attack. Yeah, I spoke to him, yeah. I saw him, I was with him two days ago. He's okay, he's all good. So, um, questions? When do we all give a turn? Thank you, pardon? <laughs> when I what? When do we all give a turn? Get a turn? <laughs> <laughs> well, interesting you say that because essentially if you fit it, you can more or less drive on that, you but you've got to fit in it. It's been made specifically for me, it's bespoke. So uh, anyone who's not my height will find it rather clean. Uh, That's heightest. That's heightest. Take my girls off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's, your, uh, who's your co-driver? Uh, co-driver is a guy called Dennis Neagle. Yep. Um, Dennis is a, he's a Kiwi. He's got about 30, 35 years experience. Yep. Most of the Targa events. Right. So he's, he's a pretty good co-driver. So right. I've, I've had many, many, many years doing notes. Yep. It wasn't he does, so... We've, um, we've gelled pretty well together. Right. So that was a blind rally, but we also do post on days. Right. I heard him calling Main Road. I didn't see any Main Road there. Oh, there was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a bit of a joke. Yeah, some of the roads are a bit, very, very tight. Um, like I said, if you go back, like that, that section I was telling you about, which I hit that causeway, uh, at about 165 where it was, you notice the road isn't quite straight. You could hear the engine would have been really going pretty hard at that point. Um, yeah, the road is literally only as wide as what needed that car away. Yeah, That's yeah. It. And then there's a grass verge, and the tree line would have been as wide as this, maybe a bit down like in parts. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know. And there's other, there's other roads have been doing similar things, you know, 160, 170 kilometres an hour, and the trees are only, you know, hit in the, hit in the car way off, off your mirrors. Since, and, you, um, since you built the car... Silly. Since you built the car, has it sort of lived up to your expectations? Yeah, it has, actually. It's been... Um, a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I've, I've been riding a very long time. I, I've done rear wheel drive cars, I've been in front wheel drive cars, and a lot of four wheel drive cars. But I call this fun wheel drive. Because a big runny motor up front and rear wheel drive. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great package. The, um, the first strut semi trailing arm rear suspension is a great layer for a rear wheel drive rally car. And um, yeah, BMW did a great job with the E30 when they put it together. Um, unfortunately, the engines of the E30 weren't that conducive to what I wanted to do, but the rules allowed me to upgrade the motor to a later version, and um, yeah, it's a great little package. Mm. What class does the car actually compete in? Uh, this one is classified as a club rally car. Right. Put up, there's a, um, essentially rallying ones to production car rules. Yep. So a car has to have a lot of production car parts in it, mostly be a production car. The thing is, the Datsuns and the Escorts and the Mazdas and things are getting to a point where they're so old, yeah. engines are pretty much hard to get come by. So they kept the production car class and created club car rules, club, club rally car as a category. And that category essentially is a production rally car that allows you to use an engine for the same manufacturer, but a later, a later one. And so basically, people who had their Datsuns and couldn't get engines anymore from anything else like that, instead of parking it forever or scrap it or whatever, they can just get a later model engine. So if you had a Datsun 1600, you put an SR20 um, engine in it, or a Ford, you could put an Escort if you wanted to go that way, you put a Duratec engine in it, you've got plenty of money, put a YB Cosworth, and you've got too much money, put a BDG Cosworth in it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so that's it. So uh, I, I compete in what's essentially a two-wheel drive category. To answer your question. Will so, you give this a go tomorrow at the Hill Park? Didn't know it was on. I'm in Tournament tomorrow, so I didn't know. I didn't know it was on. But no, this, this thing isn't really ideal for hill climbing. I mean, you could you could run it in hill climb, but it's just not. It's too heavy. It's 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 made it's made to be doing. As you can see, some of those roads were pretty rough, as rough already. So you, there's a lot of reinforcement in the car. The the rear arms you wouldn't recognise, um, or you might. But there's a, they've all been welded, plated, gusseted. All, all sorts of things. So, and that just adds weight to the car. The sump guard, you might have seen, there's 20 kilos in there. You know, you've got, so, 
Mm. There's a lot. There's a lot of weight that you've got to put into the car in order to make it strong enough mm. to um, withstand rigors and rallying. Yes. So, all-wheel drive versus uh, rear-wheel drive. How much of an advantage do they give you in terms of control on these sorts of roads? Oh, enormous. I was going to sort of say. I mean, I don't understand how you're still alive. I mean. <laughs> I'm serious, I mean, it's been 22 years. This looks like they're driving with the Russian roulette. I mean, um, how many accidents have you been in? I couldn't tell you. Uh, Not because I don't want to, because um, I've just lost count. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean I've, done, I've been off the road a couple of times. I mean, when I was rallying with Steve, we had quite a few accidents down in the ARC, and the car would come back and he'd email me or text me or whatever and down at the data log, and I, I, I'd usually get something like 150 kilometres an hour, fourth gear, 100% throttle position. Because that was where we left the road, usually. Um, I was interested in a left-hand drive car one day in a rally in Melbourne, and it's snowing. And um, this is in July, we go to the mountains up behind Healesville and Murraysville. And I didn't realise how much as a co-driver you read the road as a co-driver, because you get nuts and you're calling it, you know, six left, 50, blah, 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 whatever. But what you don't realise is how much you report, you, you're following the actual road, you know, contours of the road, and it's snowing, all you've got is two brown lines. becomes quite, quite challenging. And um, you're going to one piece of road, and again, like I said, it was left-hand drive Evo 5, and the driver, for some unknown reason, decided to get out of the wheel ruts through a kink, because you want to set for a corner that's about 200 metres away. And the problem was, we were doing about 143, 144 clicks, and suddenly when you get out of the wheel marks in the snow at that speed, the car starts rotating. And um, we were tagged down the road at that speed and we didn't hit a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Other times, you hit things and we, I rolled, we rolled over the head of one guy once. who was standing in the wrong position, he was very, very lucky. But um, yeah, ripped wheels out, all sorts of things. And Next. Next. <laughs> <laughs> all forms of motor racing. Oh yeah, look, rallying is, look, it, motorsport, rallying, like any motorsport, is only as dangerous as you want to make it. You know, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, I, I, I've worked my way out to speed, I could, I could have been going a little bit faster, that, that stage was 13 fastest, the following stage was 10 fastest, um, like I said, in a, in, a, in a really good field, but the, the trick is to build up your speed, um, you know, crawl, walk, run, you know, mm-hmm. go. Same, 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 yeah. When, when do you take all your notes? You go, you, you go over the whole track first? In that particular rally we didn't, we got... No, off. in a normal In a, in a, in a, in a uh, pay start rally we do what's called a reconnaissance. I reckon we go over the road and you usually only give them two, two runs over the road. So one essentially is to write your notes and the other one is to check them. And, but you only put the speed limits in the forest for 50 kilometres an hour. And I was 84 when I was doing 185 down the road, even though it was a T-junction, you could see the the trees were obviously in front of where you were, but what you couldn't quite tell at 50 kilometres an hour was the road you're going on, onto dipped ever so slightly. So you couldn't actually see the ribbon of brown at the T in front of you when you came out. The torch was quite wide, and 185 clicks just, just, just doesn't exist. So basically, I got to count me down, and the first time we did, first time we did it, oh, I should have listened because I thought, no, he's not white, and then she is. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in backwards. So I, I, I turned it in, it was actually fast, and I spun it. So uh, luckily, I did something in here. So that the last one? No, no, that was in Banaka. Oh, that wasn't the winner there, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, uh, I think. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. I think thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely fantastic. Well, uh, oh, by the way, congratulations, you met before. You said yes. congratulations. Oh, yes, yes. Tell us about what um, you've been doing. Okay, like I said, I've been rallying for 33 years as a co-driver. It's, this is a six-year project to build, and I entered what was called the Queensland Clubman Series, which is, uh, there's a novice, then Clubman, and then there's outright QRC, Queensland Road Championship. And because I hadn't driven before, I thought, well, I won't go to QRC, because I'm up against guys who've been driving these roads for 30 years, 20 years, that's a bit, since I've never actually done that, so I'm, I elected to compete in the Quentin Club and Series, and we won it. So that was a, wow. it, was a, it, was a it was a great introduction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, old Bimmer, country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>